Today, I'm going to show you how to do this with the help of the GSAP Flip plugin. Look at that. What's up, everybody? Gary Simon here. So, today we're going to be taking a look at a GSAP or Greensock Animation Platform plugin called Flip. Now, what Flip does is I, it allows you to seamlessly transition between two states even if there are sweeping changes to the structure of the DOM like reparenting of elements which would normally cause them to jump to a new position or size. Uh, there's a bunch of examples this is a great video here for you to check out but there's a bunch of examples they have on CodePen that will demonstrate exactly what is happening um, with the flip plugin and as you can see it just basically seamlessly transitions between two different states, uh, no matter what's happening in the DOM with those elements. And so the Flip plugin is one of those plugins uh, for Greensock that will require you to have a Club Greensock membership. So it is a paid plugin. No, they did not uh, pay me or sponsor this video, but I, I think it's a really cool plugin that I haven't seen um, anybody else do. Um, so I decided I would cover it. So just to show you again, what we'll be doing the very simple uh, as you'll see with the JavaScript you don't have to have extensive JavaScript uh, knowledge to, to get this to work and of course there's a million different use cases so as always if you haven't yet make sure to subscribe and let's get started but wait just one second you're about to watch me write a little bit of JavaScript to create a cool front-end experience but you may not be very experienced with front-end development if that's the case then the sponsor of this video Scrimba is here to help they recently launched their front-end development career path which is a collection of courses that cover HTML CSS JavaScript react and much much more as you see it's over 75 hours of awesome content there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer so check out the first link in the description below to get 50 percent off all right so before we begin i just wanted to show uh here's the documentation for the flip plugin uh here's a great video that runs you through all uh, like pretty much everything like all the methods and such uh that you should definitely check out if you're interested more um, and of course they give you feature highlights and all these great examples at CodePen, um, and then of course usage. All right. So, um, when it comes to all their plugins, you know, they're, they're really, you know, the documentation is very solid as you can see. Um, so, uh, these are the plugins here. Uh, of course there's a ton of different plugins that you can have access to. Um, and of course when it comes to, um, the flip plugin, I uh, the it is going to be available if I go to flip plugin right here I uh, by the shockingly uh, I guess you could say tier of their um, you know their premium service which is 99 bucks per year and I just wanted to mention um, you know the sites that you see on awards like awwards.com I I would say the bulk of them are using GSAP. So it's a good investment if you're really serious about taking your web design and all that to the next level. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with an actual project here. So I have right here Visual Studio Code open and we have uh, an index.html. Of course, there's nothing written in it yet. Uh, I just have a link uh, right here to a CSS main.css file. So in our folder of CSS, I have a main SAS file, which I'm watching with the live SAS compiler. Um, over here for images, I just have a few images that I took from uh, unsplash.com. And we're gonna use that as the basis of an image gallery, basically. So um, also open with live server. That's the live server extension. You can get in the extension section over here as well. All right, so here it is, it is blank and empty. So let's get started on the actual HTML markup, and it's very simple, of course. So um, I'm gonna have an empty div called insert, and this is how we're going to, I'm gonna demonstrate this particular example of using the flip plugin. I, what I'm gonna do is we're going to use JavaScript to place some of the images and take them out of their container or their parent element and then put it back into a different element right here. Um, and so that's going to completely change up the document and you're going to see we're going to be able to animate smoothly between um, that change or while that change is occurring. So um, next one we'll have container and then we're going to have an image. 
Um, source is going to be, let's see here, images one.jpg. Um, I'm not going to deal with putting alts uh, right now just because I want this to go faster, even though you should in production. Um, we're going to have a class here as well of move. All right. And that's it. So we're going to replicate this a few times, um, six to be exact. And then we're going to just change this up to three, four, five, six. And then um, we're going to have one more just extra uh, element here that we're going to put into the gallery just to show you that these don't have to be images. They could be anything. So uh, this is going to be a class of move. And inside of here, we'll just have like an H3 only the best, whatever that means. And then paragraph with a lorem of maybe just 10 uh, words here. So, all right, so that's good for now. Uh, we will be making a slight adjustment to certain classes. We're gonna be adding a class here just to make this work. But for now, this will function great. So now let's go to our main SAS, uh, SAS file and let's um, get the document styled up here because if we look right here, this is what it looks like right now, so. It looks like garbage. All right, so body. Um, we're gonna put a margin of 8M and 14M units. No, this is not responsive. This is just a quick demo. Um, it, perhaps it would be a good uh, exercise for those of you who wanna try to make it responsive. All right, we're gonna use Font Family Poppins. I already have that installed, so I'm not gonna bother installing that or, link, or importing it rather. We're gonna do width 100%. Um, we're gonna do a height of a fixed height of 200 pixels. Now. I was gonna use an experimental feature of Firefox. I, it's gonna be coming to browsers, I'm not sure when, um, but there's a, a native masonry uh, grid option that's gonna be coming. Uh, and it's, it is available in Firefox if you enable a certain flag. I think I'm gonna do a video on that very soon, uh, but I decided not to do that. Um, I think we're just gonna use that as a topic of another video. Object fit cover, all right? So if we check out the result here, we can see that uh, it, it it performs clipping uh, on the images themselves so that they all have the same height. Um, so that's very cool. We, we don't want to leave it like this though. So let's continue on. Uh, we're going to do insert. Um, for now, we're going to leave insert empty uh, because that will come last. And we're going to do a container here. So we're going to do display grid. Grid template columns will be repeat four. So we're going to have four columns and they're all gonna be even or equal with one fractional unit, and then a uh, grid gap of one M unit. And then images, we're we'll just do a, actually, we don't wanna do a cursor pointer. That doesn't even make sense. We'll just remove that. All right, so let's save that, and this is what it looks like. Um, I did wanna style this just a tad bit, so I'm going to copy this rule set. Back. We just have a background, a very light gray, as you'll see here, and then padding one M unit and it is not saving. What is happening? Why isn't it updating this? Uh-oh, all right, let's figure it out. It's time to go into debug. Oh, is it because of that? Is it because I had an empty rule set? No, it's not because I had an empty rule set. Item, oh, that's why. I forgot to add the class item there. There we go. All right, <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, this is this is uh, what we're gonna go with. And then we were going to take a few of these and we're going to push them inside of this right here. So what we'll do is we're going to put in a relocate class. All right, and we'll do it to like three of them or something, like just randomly. You can, you can experiment with however you, many you want. Um, so we have a relocate class that's on just a, a few of them. And now we wanna move them into this element right here, anything that has a relocate class. So we're gonna use vanilla JavaScript with this and we're gonna put script, all right? And we, we just have to get a, um, define a few variables. Um, so we're gonna say let insert equals document dot query, ah, not that one, selector. And we're gonna say, we're gonna get our insert, which is the insert class, which is defined up here. All right, and then we're also going to shift alt down. Um, we're going to put relocate, and we're gonna get a query selector all because we have multiple elements with the relocate class. All right, so 
relocate. All right. Now we want to uh, go ahead and also get all of our um, items here with the class of move. All right, we could use query selector all, but just to let you know, GSAP, once we get that imported, uh, has their own utilities that will get them all for you as well. Items equals gsap.utils.toArray move. All right. And now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a timeout. So set timeout. And inside of here, we're going to say relocate, all right, for each. So we're going to iterate over each one of those that they found. In this case, there's going to be three. Uh, we're going to put in or pass in um, rel. And then we're going to say insert.append child rel. All right, so insert. This is where we want to insert into. So we say insert.append child. And we'll take this right here as it iterates in through each one of them. It'll put these essentially like that. All right. Um, and then, of course, we have to have our second parameter of our set timeout. We'll say uh, 1.5 seconds or 1500 milliseconds. Um, and that's pretty good right there. But we do have to, in order for this to work, we have to import. Uh, GSAP. All right. So if you go to google.com, type in GSAP CDN. All right. Just copy this line right here. All right. So we'll go ahead and say script source. Oh, I copied that one already. Oops. I did that off screen. There we go. All right. So now if we save this, we'll refresh. Now I don't want all these to be completely extended like that. So that's why that other rule set that uh, I had deleted here for a second. This is why I'm going to put in the insert rule set. So the insert rule set is, gonna is also going to be a display grid. But instead of repeating four columns, we're going to do a repeat of two columns. And grid grab 1M units with 100%, um, which I don't think we need to add here. I was, I was experimenting with the different widths and then margin 1am on the bottom and top. All right, so now if we go back, let's refresh. All right, so how do we get this to animate and between all of them seamlessly? It's actually very simple with the help of the Flip plugin. Now, I already have the Flip plugin here installed. Of course, this is a, I, you know, a club green sock. I, you know, plug in, so you're gonna have to have to pay for it. Or if you want to experiment it with it, experiment it with it without having to pay for it, you can do so at CodePen. They'll actually allow you to you know, import all of their paid plugins, so you can work on stuff there. All right. Um, so we're gonna go back to our index.html. We're going to import our uh, script of our flip.min.js, and as with all the of the uh, green sock plugins, we're going to register it first right here. So GSAP register plugin flip. All right. And first we have to get the state, uh, the its initial state. So to do that, we say let state equals flip dot get state items. All right, because that's the items are the items right here are what we want to animate, not its parent or anything like that. So we're going to pass in the items that is defined right here. Then after that, we only have a few more lines to achieve this. We say flip dot from. We pass in our state and first parameter, and then we put in some options like duration. How long do we want this to occur? So we'll say one second, and then we can add in an ease, power one, in, out. And there's probably about five or six other different properties that you can pass in based on your needs. I will just refer back to that documentation uh, where there's a nice video overview of all of those that will demonstrate those nicely. So now, look at that. It just works seamlessly. And it's not just position. It's based on any other CSS property or most other CSS properties. For instance, notice how these the width is changing and it's automatically animating between all of them. Look at that. 
awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.